Welcome back to our live studio from Interpark and our last talk for this day six of this year's Year's Fair. We have talked quite a lot about sustainability in packaging and some of the other hot topics of this year's Interpark. And now we are going to take a closer look at digitalization, which might fall under the category of digital technologies, which is also a hot topic. And we're going to pay a special look to digitalization in logistics and packaging. And I have an expert in the field with me here today. With me is Professor Dr. Martina Poyser, um, Associative Professor at Leibniz University of Applied Sciences in Hannover. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for your invitation. We are very happy to have you here and get some, well, scientific insights into this field of uh, digitalization. You've already told me that this is your first Interpark and you have just arrived. Um, how excited are you to be here? Oh, I'm very excited. I know that the Interpark is a very, very important fair. And uh, I've been here like a few years ago to other trade fairs. And I think trade fairs are always a great possibility to see all the innovations, to talk about the future, and of course also to look interdisciplinary at some topics. Definitely. It's definitely a place where different fields and uh, people come together and can exchange ideas. Um, you are a professor in Hannover. Can you tell us a bit more about your um, well, field of research and what you do in your daily business, maybe? Yes, of course. I'm a professor for project management and organization, and my research and my consulting activities are all about innovation management and especially about how um, companies can perform better by being flexible and faster. And so we also talk about digitalization and, of course, being an agile company. We're going to talk about this in a minute. Obviously, um, the packaging industry is full of bigger or smaller companies who all have to, well... Um manage their people, their products and innovations in uh, different ways. So tell us, how do you think digitalization comes into the packaging and logistics industry? Packaging and in logistics industry made quite a big step forward in digitalization, although there's quite a lot of potential statistically in comparison to other branches. But nevertheless, for example, in um, the packaging industry, lots of investments are being made, for example, in uh, networking um, for the employees and also with the customers and the suppliers. And um, in the logistics industry, they did a lot of in um, a lot of um, budget in the production facilities. Mm -hmm. um, you just mentioned potentials that are still there and not yet quite um, used. I guess you could say, what would these potentials be? There's a lot of potential, in, um, not only in production facilities, but also in the, in the other departments. Departments like uh, not only information technologies, but also like purchase and stuff like this. So um, it's getting steps forward. Mm -hmm. um, you might also have some insights into the big trends. I guess um, sustainability obviously is also one where maybe it, digitalization can also help when you can control your uh, machineries or machines in a more effective way. Do you have some more insights uh, here how digitalization is helping companies there? Sustainability is, of course, a very, very big topic, especially the younger generations really want new solutions. They say, well, how can we do this different? And uh, especially digitalization can help us to produce with lower costs something that is more sustainable. Yes, we, we can um, avoid rubbish. We, we can try other things. We can also um, make the logistic chains more transparent and more agile. And this is what the consumers want. And these days, consumers have so much insight in all the processes and they ask for it, especially the younger generations. And so I think there's a lot of potential for the companies that um, perhaps they already have realized, but they didn't talk about it yet. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned agile companies and um, yeah, maybe also agile management as well. Can you explain to us what does that exactly mean? What are the characteristics of an agile company or management? Um, what are the key factors here? 
Agility is kind of a buzzword. Yes, I mean it's not new. Actually, it's uh, it's all fuss about oh such a new word, such a new concept. No, no, no. It was about 1917, even earlier times, when uh, we have had robots that were able to produce agile. And then it came to the information technology, and they said, well, we do agile project management. And these days we say, okay, agility we learned um, by working interdisciplinary fast with a lot of people who don't um, care about hierarchy, but who care about roles. I'm the problem sol solver, so I am in charge and I do the very best thing that I can. I can make mistakes if I do my best and I try to fail fast but cheap. And now we are talking about agility as an organization, so we are much more far away than only robotics and um, information technologies. It's more about how can I become everywhere in a company faster, more flexible, and of course cheaper and better than our competitor. Sounds like it's also a lot about efficiency. Effic of course, efficiency. If you have employees that don't always ask anymore for every little step that they are doing, but they are experts and do the best thing that they think is the best, you save time and you learn much faster mm -hmm. than waiting for the big solution of a big boss who she or he is much too far away from the process itself. Mm -hmm. So we are faster, better. It does remind me a bit about maybe a stereotypical, but how we sometimes talk about um, startups. Yes. We, we had a talk with um, with one uh, yeah company who bring together startups and bigger companies, and we talked about stereotypes and how maybe um, smaller companies or startups can naturally work more agile because they have lower hierarchies and faster communication change uh, yeah channels. Is that also is that something that is true or is it a stereotype? <laughs> That's the mindset, yes, the startup mindset. Especially bigger companies suffer by being a big a ship, yes, a really big ship like the AIDA. Yes, you're cruising in the sea and um, they wish they could turn a little bit faster, make like a speedboat, a little speedboat. So the question these days is how can we, how can we be uh, stable like a big ship? our history or the budget that we have achieved, our profits, but at the same time be flexible and fast because of the, fa uh, the fast changing market like speedboat. So this is the question, how can you be agile? And there you have to have an agile mindset. Be as stable as you need to in order to survive, but also be as flexible as you can be or have to be. Your customer ask for it. Is that something that is possible for big companies or um, is it a lot of work for them to get there? We are working on it, so every branch has its challenges, but nevertheless, um, just, a little, just a little trick for everyone who's thinking about how can, I be, uh, how can I make my big company a little bit more flexible, agile, just start with little flagships in your big company. Agile is the best when you have small teams that can work interdisciplinary fast with a lot of decision um, decision making possibilities and stuff like this. And when this flagship is very successful, you can spread it out where it makes sense. Yes, not like oh, I need to do this and this and this where it makes sense. Just plant another flagship, plant another flagship and then you have on the most important spots in your company your agile flagships and on the spots where you need stability you have the stable normal routine departments that you also need in order to survive. Interesting. That's very interesting. I'm wondering whether this can like work then in the whole company or if you have like if you come at, to a point where you have too many different um, management systems. That's a task. Maybe. That's a task. So I recommend to implement someone who is next to the CEO. It's a chief digital officer. Chief digital officer is not an IT expert, but he or she is someone who is visionary and understands how to combine the networks, the little speedboats with the big, uh, with the big ship. And so you always need to know where it makes sense to be agile. And um, of course, it's a challenge because there's also a lot of 
fire between those two worlds, but it's worth it to try it and to talk about it. Yes, it's not, it make, does not always make sense to be agile. So um, I don't have one recipe for all. You have to look at it. And then where it makes sense, you should try it. And you need one of a top coordinator on top positions. This is very important. Who has, um, who overlooks everything. Yeah. I guess big changes always come along with challenges as well. Coming back to the packaging industry, do you have um, an example or some um, advice for companies specifically in this industry on how to become more agile? I think especially in the logistics and packaging industry, because you have so many networks also with suppliers and your customers, um, you should you should build up a network with your customers and your suppliers. There are already agile concepts there. I will talk about tomorrow. I will have another uh, speech. And there I also have some examples. And um, I think there lies a lot of potential. You can work with your suppliers like um, you cross the border. You don't only work in your own company, but you build teams with your customer. Integrate your customers. I think especially in packaging, there are still a lot you can do mm -hmm. because the customer will tell you what they want and listen to your customer what they want. And so I think this is one of the most easiest thing that you can do when you try to be more flexible and agile and of course successful in the packaging industry. I think um, communication is kind of yes. key the way I'm taking communication it Communication right is king. Yeah, king. <laughs> software, soft, um, implementing software is not hard, mm -hmm. but you have to check the processes, the mindset, the communication skills. Um, everything changes if you, if you put new software into a company, especially if you digitalize um, half of the company it perhaps also changes the heart of the company. Who are we now? Mm. Who will we be? And um, I think a lot of software projects are not successful because you did not do the work first. Mm -hmm. So it's not always about IT, and this is why I'm here. So bringing the kind of uh, inter personal relationships and the digital together. Very interesting. If we look into the future, where, you where do you see this transformative um, maybe ride of agility and also digitalization going? I think agility now, uh, we are not in the start anymore. A lot of companies tried it also in packaging logistics. There are lots of project, um, agile project management methods they tried. I think we're now in a stage where we learn. We learn and we get better. Like I said, where does it make sense? Where do we have to go a step backwards? With digitalization also, um, the first steps are made and now the companies are thinking about how to roll out in the whole company, not only in some points of production facilities. And they saw also the potential how they can save money and be more flexible and faster than a competitor when they combine on one hand IT knowledge and on the other hand they know how to work a job proper and these are the two really success factors mm -hmm. you also mentioned that you are a consultant as well so tell us why should people and companies come to you and um, ask for advice and what advice would they receive <laughs> I always say I combine theory and practical experiences mm -hmm. I talked to about more than 100 150 companies in the last eight years and I'm really studying agility I'm I'm totally neutral. I know the newest results, um, what made sense, what did not make sense. And I can also talk about certain branches, about their experiences and help other branches also. And I know the theory is not working out every time the best. So what I do is taking the best out of theory and then putting it into the practice and looking what function the practice in order to make it, like tailor it to the company. So. This is what you can do. Great. Especially with a little quick check. I, um, I developed, it's a performance quick check mm -hmm. that companies can do. And so you can spot out the most important things where, where they could have potential in order to get better, get more agile. Sounds wonderful. So people should definitely come and talk to you tomorrow. You'll be here as well, also holding a talk then. Yes. We are looking forward to that. Thank you so much for stopping by and giving us these inspiring insights. Thank you very much for the invitation. You're welcome. And Thank I hope you. I see you all tomorrow. <laughs>